in today's class, I'm going to use the term security. But I might say the euro, I might say Bitcoin, I might say Facebook, I might say Google. But I'm referring to all tradable assets. Similarly, I intermix the terms investing and trading. We know the difference. Most of us here are traders. Investing is a much longer term situation, but it gets very boring saying trading, 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 trading. So I mix the terms. Now, whether I'm giving a seminar, a webinar, attending a conference, meeting new traders, whatever I'm doing, the first thing everybody seems to ask me is, what should I buy today? What will the prices be next week or tomorrow? I can't tell you how many emails, phone calls, SMSs I've gotten, how many friends have actually, what do you think is going to happen to the markets? What should I buy now? What should I sell now? What's going to happen with this coronavirus? To be honest with you, nobody knows because you know what? Nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody has a Ouija board. So if you're attending this class in the hopes that technical analysis using Bollinger Bands has the answer to all these questions, I'm afraid I have to disappoint you. However, if you're attending this class and the hopes that technical analysis using Bollinger's will improve your investing and trading, that it surely will. Now, Bollinger Bands is one of the most respected technical indicators in the market. It was developed by a money manager and researcher named John Bollinger. Now, the nice thing about Bollinger Bands is John Bollinger is still very active in the markets. And you can, at your leisure, go to www.bollingerbands.com and learn it and see all the rules and the evaluations and everything else from the, the master, Mr. Bollinger himself. Now, it's very rare they see any chart not accompanied by Bollinger Bands as they become a must visualization tool. Now, there's a lot of abundance or a huge abundance of information published about how to trade with Bollinger Bands. Most of it is discretionary in theory. In other words, John Bollinger developed a band to tell you something. Lots of traders, gurus, professionals, wannabe professionals, want to get rich quick scheme guys, have all developed their own unique application of Bollinger Bands. And they've come up with their own interpretations. A lot of them have been used for a very, very, very long time. And they're very successful and they're very good and reliable. So, but be careful when you're looking at all the discretionary information out there. Now, before describing the strategies that look exactly at Bollinger Bands, we have to understand what these bands are on our charts. Now, Bollinger Bands can be applied in all financial markets, including equities, Forex, commodities, and futures. Bollinger Bands can be used in most time frames from very short-term periods to hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly. So Bollinger Bands is one of the few indicators that adjust quickly to very short time frames. A lot of indicators that people are using out there, they don't realize they don't work well in 15 minute, five minute and one minute charts because they don't adjust to or they give you inaccurate information in those tight time frames. Bollinger Bands can be used in any financial market you wish. Now Bollinger Bands answers a very simple basic question. And if you ask John Bollinger, that's all he tells you it was really developed for. Are prices high or low on a relative basis? By definition, price is high at the upper band of the Bollinger Bands and price is low at the lower band. Okay. Now this is an incredible bit of information and it's even more powerful when combined with other tools such as other indicators for confirmation. So let's go over and take a look at what Bollinger Bands looks like on a chart. Let me pop up a chart here for us. So we're looking at my standard teaching chart. This is the Euro US dollar. We're looking at a one hour chart and over top of my price action, I've laid Bollinger Bands on. Okay, now, you don't have to do any calculations. You don't have to do any setups, you just click on under indicators, Bollinger Bands, because it's such a popular indicator, and it's going to drop it on. Now, Bollinger Bands consist of an upper band, a lower band, and a middle band, which is a moving average band. So we start out with a 20-period moving average on our charts. So now we just flipped over to Bitcoin because I set it up before glass on this Bitcoin chart. So what we see is this gold line, and that is a 
20 period uh, EMA of price, standard exponential moving average. Bollinger Bands then use a calculation called standard deviation. And it drops a lower band and an upper band, or lower line and an upper line using plus two standard deviations and minus two standard devi deviations. Now, you can adjust this to two and a half or three, but standard deviations is a complex mathematical formula. And if you're going to adjust it, you have to learn how to interpret it, not because you can't interpret it by the rules, but, you know, the standard rules, because then it becomes Barry's bands. It is no longer Bollinger bands. Now, we can see the Bollinger bands on the chart. The shape of the Bollinger bands is basically unimportant. Sometimes you end up seeing something that looks like a tadpole. Sometimes they look like an alien. Sometimes they look like a dragon. Those shapes don't tell you anything. What we're looking for is the reaction between the upper band, the dark green line, and the lower band, the dark green line, and price, and the moving average line that goes in between. Now when the bands grow wider, like we see here or here, means that the markets are more volatile. When we see the bands contract, we know it tells us the markets are less volatile. So we do want to see the width of the bands, and what's called Bollinger Band width, and that will help us understand how volatile the markets are. What does that tell, help you with? Well, number one, it'll help you where to put your stop loss, won't it? Because when you know how volatile the market is, you know where you have to set your stop loss. Okay. But what's important to us is this band, this band, this moving average line, and price. Now. Once we know what lines are important, we have to understand where this and this line come from. Just simply saying to you, it's two standard deviations, doesn't do you much good because you have no idea what I'm talking about. And so you have no idea when it's giving you a wrong or a false signal and why sometimes you might want to adjust that. So let's talk about what a standard deviation is. After today, you'll never, ever have to discuss it. You'll never have to calculate it. You'll never have to do anything with it but you need to understand what it is. So Bollinger Bands are a technical analysis tool. Specifically, they are a type of trading band or envelope. Trading bands and envelopes serve the same purpose. They provide relative definition of high and low that can be used to create rigorous trading approaches. Bands are usually thought of as employing a measure of central tendency. That's our moving average, the central line. Whereas envelopes do not have this type, same type of structure. So that's really the difference between a band and an envelope. Now, Bollinger Bands, as I said, is based on standard a calculation, a statistical and mathematical formula that was not developed for the financial markets. It is a well-used, well-known mathematical computation, like I said, known as standard deviation. Now, interesting, in the real world, no statistician would ever calculate standard deviation by hand. The calculations are involved and are somewhat complex, and the risk of making a mistake is high. So we all use computers, so do we. So like I said, you'll never have to calculate it. So standard deviation, and once you understand, once, you, once I explain it to you, you'll never have to do it again. So I'm sorry, this is a little bit wordy. <coughs> I'm going to try to explain it to you in words that, not words in terms that we can imagine. So standard deviation is a measure of the dispersion of a set of data from its mean. So if we take the word mean out and just put in moving average, and we put in standard deviation is a measure of the variation between the opens, the high, the low, and the close from its standard, from its moving average. It is calculated as the square root of variance by determining the variation between each data point relative to the mean. So what is the variation between the open and the, the stand and the moving average, the close and the moving average, the high of the moving and the moving average, and the low in that time segment? 
And that is the variation that we use for the calculation. So it's the square root of that variation or variance. If the data points are farther from the mean or the moving average, there's a higher deviation within that data set. Okay? Or there's a higher deviation within the open, high, low, and the close. So in its simplest form, the mean is simply the moving average of all the data points in the given set. The mean is the moving average of say all the closes. And if you're using a 20 period moving average, it's a sum of all the closes over 20 periods added together and divided by 20. So this means that the calculation is always taking into account the most recent sessions movements and the older sessions drop off as they become irrelevant. An exponential moving average is calculated by weighting each data point and giving greater significance to the more recent data. So believe me, this is the last one. Standard deviation is calculated based on the moving average or the mean. The distance of each data point from the average is squared, summed, and averaged to find a variance. Or to put it another way, variance is derived by taking the mean or the moving average of the data point, subtracting each the mean from each data point individually, squaring each of these results, and then taking another mean of these squared. Whoa, now that's a mouthful. Standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. Okay, we're done with that. So Bollinger Bands uses the middle band, which is a 20 period moving average, the upper band, which is set to two standard deviations, and the lower band that is set to minus two standard deviations. Okay, we're finished. So let's go back to a chart. So this upper band and this lower band, let's go to our settings. So we're using a 20 period moving average based on the close and a standard deviation of two. Now, of course, you could change this to two and a half or to one or to three, but then if you notice the bands change, the width change, and it no longer fits the general accepted rules that you will have. You can also change your moving average to a longer period or a shorter period. But again, that changes everything you're looking at. And therefore you can't, you have to then test it yourself to come up and verify the rules that you're using. And there's lots of people out there in the markets pushing a four and two and a half, you know, a, a, um, a, um, they're pushing a, a 10 or nine period moving average with a two and a half standard deviation. And then they're giving you a set of rules to live by. But you never know when those people are giving these gurus, how much they've tested and how long they've back tested. You know, will it work in tomorrow's type market? So I always use the standard defaults that the person who developed the indicator, whether it's RSI, stochastic, developed them for. So what do we have? We have the upper and the lower band. And we have the moving average band. And then we have price. And what can we see when we simply look at this chart? Look at that, the price pushed all the way down to that band, was rejected, came back up, still stayed below that moving average and then continued its downtrend. Okay. Here it moved over, but stayed above that moving average rode that band and then came, rode that moving average and came down. Here we see price moving up and it rides on that band. This is called riding the bands. When price hugs, hugs the band. When price comes up and tries to touch the upper band and can't do that and falls back down and comes back, we call that band rejection. But we only get a signal when price is rejected and then crosses the moving average. Okay. So here we see an uptrend, we see the riding bands, price falls back down, but it never crosses below the moving average and it continues its uptrend, comes down here, stays on that moving average, stays back up, it's rejected by the upper band. And finally here, it breaks through. This is then generating a, or telling you that uptrend is over. And when it crosses that moving average, it's generating, in this case, a sell signal. 
Now, the thing about Bollinger Bands, it doesn't tell you how far that price is going to move. Okay. There's nothing in this indication here that you would make 50 points or 100 points. Now, while it's riding that lower band, you can amply stay in that market. At this point, that it's rejected and moves back towards the moving average. You wouldn't be jumping out of the, the market, but you would be waiting for something at this level. When it doesn't break the, the moving average and comes back down, you know that you're still safe in that market. It's still continuing a downtrend. But right here, once it's broken that moving average, you know that this trend is either very weak, in trouble, or officially ended. So there's many ways that we can use these bands and use them for our trading and how to interpret them. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. Let's talk about this a wee bit. So we need to translate all of this information into something we can use. Now, Bollinger Bands has three primary uses. One is pattern recognition and we will see, you know, just like you know in the markets, you see double tops, double bottoms, you see triangles, you see head and shoulders. Well, Bollinger Bands has what we call M's and W's. They don't work so well in our type of short-term trading, but when they develop, they're like head and shoulders. They take a, quite a long time to develop. But when they do, and you can notice that fourth leg, you can have, they're very, very reliable. They also give us early warning signals and they give us trend analysis because as we can see when we get the direct the the rejection from the upper or the lower band when the prices are trending it's telling us that that trend is becoming weak or, or ending so one of the most popular ways or pattern recognitions is called the m or the w one is just the reverse of the other so on this chart we actually see the formation of the w Now, you would not recognize it here. You wouldn't even see it here. You wouldn't recognize it here. And you might pick it up as it bounces off the bottom here. So the W is formed when price is moving in a downtrend. It forms a bottom, bounces off that bottom and comes back up. It's a new, forms a top. Okay. Doesn't matter if it formed it here, here, or here, but hits that upper band and, and is rejected and comes down. It forms a second bottom that is equal to that previous bottom. So we have a second bottom. When price bounces off that bottom and is forming that fourth leg of the W, okay, until it crosses that moving average, we still have a possibility. Once it crosses that moving average, it is giving you a very strong buy signal. Okay. The reverse is the, ex the exact reverse is true coming off of an uptrend and then it forms an M. So we call the first three-legged formation a W. Let me get my marker off here. There we go. And then we form, so here we see the formation of the M. That a double bottoms is forming double tops. But at first, we, like I said, we wouldn't notice it right off the bat. But once it forms the N, this is the N, okay, we would maybe notice it. When it bounces off of that second top in this case, we should be seeing it. Once we see it cross that moving average, we could then know we know this uptrend is fully over and we can then trade in the opposite direction. So we have that formation of an either right side up or upside down N, depending on whether we have an M or a W. So this works extremely well when you combine it, and Bollinger Bands entirely works extremely well when you combine it with other indicators like RSI. We highly recommend combining the Bollinger Band with the RSI indicators, the perfect match. There are two types of tops that you need to be aware of. Okay. One is after a trend move, price fails to reach the outer band as the uptrend becomes weaker. This signal is usually accompanied by an RSI divergence or a continuation signal. And two, during cons uh, consolidation, price spikes 
into the outer band, whether it's the upper or the lower, which gets rejected immediately. This will give us a reversal signal into a short direction. So during trends, the moving average holds very accurately and a break above that moving average is usually a meaningful signal that the sentiment has shifted. During a downtrend, the moving average could have been used as a re-entry signal to add an existing position during a pullback. Furthermore, the moving average can be used as a trade exit signal where a trader does not close his existing positions unless price has broken the moving average. By combining these Bollinger Bands with the moving average, a trader can create a robust trading method. So once again, we can see here on the chart, whatever price is, is, is and then we see price rejected off of the, the band, and it comes up and breaks that moving average. That's telling us something, whatever downtrend it was coming off of is over, and we might have, we will have the beginnings of an uptrend. And we can see price riding that band all the way up here. But each of the times that it gets a slight rejection from that outer band, it stays above the moving average. Finally up here, it pushes up, eases back down, pushes again very hard to, to reach that out, upper outer band, does it, and finally comes down and breaks the moving average. This is the point that's telling you this trend is over and we've moved into a downtrend. And we can see that that downtrend would have given us a lot of points. Now, the fact is you're saying, well, guy, that's really easy to see after it's all happened. And that's the biggest problem with all, learning everything because we can only trade at the wall moving forward. Okay. So we can use Bollinger Bands to tell us what's gonna happen as price moves forward in that wall. So if the wall had been here and we had gotten the rejection, gotten the crossover, and we had firmly believed in our Bollinger Bands and, and used them often and you know traded from them, we would have been comfortable entering a short trade. So the only way that you're gonna be able to match this is to practice, 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 and practice till you can trust your interpretations of the bands. While Bollinger Bands is excuse me, helpful in determining when an asset is overshot to the upside or downside, it's important to use the bands to also set risk conditions, not just entry points. Additionally, risk and reward should be set based on the width of the bands. The wider the band, the more volatile the market. The farther away you should be placing your stop loss because your market is more volatile. When the market is less volatile or contrite, you can place your stop loss closer. Well, that helps you once you figure out where you have to place your stop loss to calculate your risk reward ratios. So in contrast to most other indicators, the Bollinger Bands are a non-static indicator and they change their shape based on the recent price action and accurately measure momentum and volatility. Thus, we can use Bollinger Bands to analyze the strength of trends and get a lot of important information this way. So what we wanna do is we wanna pay attention to very few, uh, uh, very few points, but pay close attention. During strong trends, price should stay close to the outer band. Now, don't mix up the term outer and upper. Outer band means either upper in an uptrend, lower band in a downtrend. It's the outer band. So when price is moving up in a beautiful, well-developed trend, price should be hugging that band or riding that band on the top band. If price is moving down and down in a well-constructed downtrend, price should be riding on that bottom of the band. If price pulls away from the outer band as the trend continues, so if you see price continuing upward, but price is rejected by that upper band, it's telling you something. It's telling you the momentum of that trend is fading. Okay. So repeated pushes or rejection into that outer band that doesn't actually reach the band shows a lack of power. So you have fading momentum and a lack of power. A break of the moving average is often the signal that that, that trend has ended. So there are four valuable pieces of information or four precise steps you need to take. So here in this screenshot, we can see an entire story of an asset. In one, we see price riding the bands downward. 
Two, we see the rejection by the ban. Okay. Three, we see price moving up and then breaking the moving average. Gives us a signal that, that trend is now, the downtrend is over and we've moved in an uptrend. The break above the moving average means we could buy. We could have bought all the way up into that first rejection. First rejection falls below the moving average, bounces right back up and moving and is rejected again. And then price breaks that moving average and we move to a downtrend and ride that bands down. So in number four, we would have had a beautiful down trade. Okay. Then price is rejected and moves sideways. It stays below that moving average. Okay. It's now hugging that moving average and breaks above that moving average, but it hasn't gone anywhere near that lower band. It's in sideways consolidation. It then finally moves to the upper band and stays on that upper band and then gets rejected. Okay. Price starts moving in a downtrend, breaks that moving average, giving us the entry key, and we could have gotten a nice downtrending down, as a sell opportunity. Okay. And then moves in the sideways. So here we're looking at, remember I told you, you can only trade at the wall moving forward. So what are we looking at here? Downtrend, rejection, sideways action, uptrend, break above the moving average. So at this point, we could have done, jumped into this market with a buy trade. We'd have to do some other analysis to figure out exactly what price we want to enter, where we'd put our target. We could set our stop loss here at the rejection, at the swing low of the rejection. We could have set our target at the high when it broke the last band, and we would have had an entire trade set up. So once we can tell the story of price with Bollinger Bands in the past, we can then apply that into the future. So remember, don't freak out. There's nothing you have to calculate. You just simply have to look at the bands and the moving averages. So let me share with you a little presentation on two simple strategies. Actually, I'm going to share with you a little presentation on the best technical indicators. And here we'll combine four technical indicators. You'll see us combine Bollinger Bands with RSI and um, with MACD and how we will use them in conjunction with each other to make a trading decision. Indicator 1, RSI. The relative strength index compares the magnitude of recent gains to recent losses in an attempt to determine overbought and oversold conditions of an instrument. As you can see from the chart, the RSI ranges from 0 to 100. An instrument is deemed to be overbought once the RSI approaches the 70 level, meaning that it may be getting overvalued and is a good candidate for a pullback or reversal. Likewise, if the RSI approaches 30, it is an indication that the instrument may be getting oversold and therefore likely to reverse. Traders will often use the RSI either coming back out of its overbought or oversold areas as a signal or partial signal to enter a trade. As we can see, the RSI is often accurate when indicating when a market will reverse. A trader using RSI should be aware that large rallies and drops in the price of an instrument will affect the RSI by potentially creating false buy or sell signals. Traders often combine the RSI with other indicator signals such as MACD crosses. Indicator 2 MACD. The moving average convergence divergence is one of the most well known and used indicators in technical analysis. This indicator is made up of two exponential moving averages which help measure momentum in an instrument. These moving averages and the changing distances between them become the MACD. Convergence simply means the moving averages are moving closer together and divergence simply means they are moving away from one another. When the shorter term moving average is above the longer term moving average, this area of the indicator will show activity. When the shorter term moving average is below the longer term moving average, this area of the indicator will show activity. The center line, of which the MACD is plotted around, indicates where the moving averages are equal, and when the MACD passes through the center line, this indicates the moving average is crossing. The signal line, here in red, is a moving average of the MACD values themselves. Typical values of the MACD are 26 and 12 exponential moving averages, and 9 for the signal line. The farther apart the moving average is, and the greater the momentum, 
the farther away the MACD will be from the centre line. Traders use MACD and signal line crosses, such as these, to indicate momentum trades. You can see how these crosses often match up with market moves. Traders also use the MACD crosses to indicate when momentum is coming out of the market and may use it as a signal to exit a trade. Indicator 3. Bollinger Bands A Bollinger Band starts off with a simple moving average. It then has two standard deviations plotted away from it. That sounds a mouthful, but the important part is because standard deviation is a measure of volatility, Bollinger Bands adjust themselves to current market conditions. When the markets become more volatile, the bands widen, move further away from the average, and during less volatile periods, the bands contract, moving closer to the average. The tightening of the bands is often used by technical traders as an early indication that volatility is about to rapidly increase, as volatility often follows periods of lack of volatility. The markets spend most of their time within the bands, and when the price action reaches the edge of the bands, it is often more likely to reverse and come back into the range. This is used as a signal by reversal traders to take a trade. This is similar to the oversold and overbought conditions of the RSI. Indicator 4. Super Trend Indicator The Super Trend Indicator is an excellent indicator of trend direction. It can be used as a foundation of a trading system that is based on trend following. One of the most popular ways to use this indicator is to enter the market after a pullback. For example, if the market is on a downtrend, indicated by red, Wait for a green pullback and then re-enter the market once it turns red again. The same can apply in uptrending markets. Here we can see how this indicator accurately tracks market trends. It can be refined through the settings to match the specific instrument. Indicator 5. Confluence. The last indicator isn't a new one. It's indicator confluence, which means to use multiple indicators and their signal to take a trade. Here we have the RSI and MACD we looked at. We have the RSI moving into overbought territory here. Remember that indicates the market will reverse. However, we want to help us filter out false signals on the RSI, so we also look at the MACD to give us confluence. We can see it is indicating the momentum has come out of the market, as far as the market rallying or going up is concerned, and we have an MACD cross here. A signal to enter this short trade could be waiting for the RSI to come back out as overbought and also waiting for the MACD cross we can see that those combined signals are an indication that captures this trend. You can also use the opposite signal to indicate when the momentum is coming out of the market and it's more likely to reverse and the market to retrace back up the opposite direction of our trade and therefore is an exit signal. In addition to the RSI and MACD signals, we can add further confluence to this trade with a Bollinger Band and the Super Trend Indicator. We can see the market has hit the top of the Bollinger Band here but we could also wait for the super trend indicator to change red here before taking the short trade. So now we have the confluence of four indications. We have an RSI coming back out of overbought. We have an MACD cross. We have the market going to the edge of one of the deviations on the Bollinger Band. And we also have the super trend turning back to red. So there we were able to see how we could combine several indicators using Bollinger Bands to make a trading decision. Now there's another very simple strategy that's been around for a very, very long time using Bollinger Band. It's called the Bollinger Band Squeeze. It's relatively simple, very straightforward. First, we look for a security with a narrowing band. That means what it tells you, it tells you the markets are in contraction. Okay. When we find this narrowing band, it's just like trading a triangle. We're gonna wait for price to break out of that band. When it breaks out, whether it breaks out upward or downward, it's going to carry with it a certain amount of momentum. The momentum will be equal to the width of the band. We can use the bottom of the band to put our stop loss. We can set our take profit point at the break in the direction of the band, and we can set up a trade. So it's simply keeping your eye on the band. The band narrows, the price, and then the price plunges out of the band. And it's just called the Bollinger Band Squeeze. And even though the Bollinger Band Squeeze is straightforward, Charters should at least combine this strategy with basic chart analysis to confirm signals. For example, a break above resistance can be used to confirm a break above the upper band. Similarly, a break below support could be used to confirm a break below the lower band. Unconfirmed brand, band breaks are subject to failure. So I'm gonna, I put this together in a little PowerPoint for you to see exactly what you would do. And watch it, it's just got some text on the bottom. It's very simple to see and follow along. It's very, very short.
But this way you can see how the Bollinger Band squeeze works or a simple strategy is well. So as you can see, Bollinger Bands are a multifaceted trading indicator that can provide you with lots of information about trends, buy and sell, balances, and potential trend shifts. Together with the moving average and the RSI, Bollinger Bands makes a great foundation for aiding trading strategy. So thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you stay safe and healthy and sound while we go through this global pandemic. And like I said, go to www.alvexo.com, open a demo account, and learn and practice while we have nothing but extra time on our hands and become a master using Bollinger Bands or any other indicators so that when this global crisis is over, you can become a good, solid, educated trader. Thank you very much for joining us and have a great trading day. Bye now.